Here's how I make accommodations for my ADHD while traveling and how you can replicate them. So I was headed to Seattle, which is around a three hour drive. So I wanted to ensure that I had enough stimulation for the entire journey so that I wouldn't get anxious or antsy. Step one, activate productivity. So I started my travel day with work. <laughs> I wanted to get my brain in a productive space. And Matt and I were launching our early bird special for a service we're offering. So this was actually a huge dopamine rush for me, uh, first thing in the day, which was actually really helpful. It was helpful because once I finished the work, I was then able to be productive and prepare for leaving. Another alternative option to sparking that productivity space is to move your body first thing. But movement does not always have to look like, you know, getting a full sweat. You could also just walk to the end of your driveway and back and that should spark enough dopamine to get yourself moving and be in a productive space. So we were quickly headed out and on our way. Step two, control sensory input. I find that I am super receptive to sensory input. And so having a nice drink on the road um, is a really big must for me. So we grabbed some drinks and food and headed across the border. Once we got across, I got a few other snacks and a new drink because honestly, the one that I got was really disappointing and I didn't like it. And so I realized that I would have a better time in the car if I got a drink that I actually liked. Did I waste $8 on a drink? Yep. <laughs> the drive actually ended up going really, really quickly because we had comedy specials playing for the entire trip in the background that I was able to watch on my phone and my partner was able to listen to while he was driving. And I also had fidgets the entire time. So I was stimulated the entire drive. Step three, ground yourself in your new space. Once we got into the city, we grabbed our things and headed into the place, which had proved to be a little confusing. There were three different doors we had to go through and three different codes and they were really weird to find. So I found myself getting super impatient and really anxious when we got there. So for me, I started to overheat when I get really anxious. So the first thing I did the second we made it into our place was try to cool myself down. I sat in front of the AC to cool down, uh, which helped honestly avoid a full panic attack and anxiety attack for me, which would have started the trip Horribly. I realized that it was way more important for me to ground myself in my new space than it was to rush out and go explore and enjoy the trip because I needed to enjoy it. And the only way I could do that was to ground myself. So accommodations, baby. So since we didn't want to rush out, we noticed that there was a pool table in the common area of the building we were staying in. And so we decided to play a game uh, just for fun. Um, again, I wanted to have full control over my body and this sometimes does take a while. And the idea of staying in the building was a lot easier than the idea of going into the busy city. Thankfully, my partner is a literal gift from heaven and was super understanding and good about everything that I needed. Step four, give yourself comfort when you are uncomfortable. So once I was feeling really good, we got changed and headed out for dinner. Since I had run into the overheating problem and anxiety earlier in the day, I made sure to wear an outfit that I could cool down really quickly by taking some things off, but I could also stay warm by throwing things on. It was a really perfect medium for me. Step five, fun substitutions. A big accommodation that my ASD and my ADHD need is fun substitutes. <laughs> Meaning I want to be stimulated and challenged because if I'm not, I can become anxious or focused on how overwhelming the situation is. And traveling can often be very overwhelming. So we decided to take scooters to our dinner, which was amazing. <laughs> this made me feel so calm and relaxed during the dinner because I was in a state of fun. If we had taken an Uber, I might have felt a bit more uptight or uncomfortable. Um, so this worked out really great. Step six, pre-planning your meals and places you're going to eat. When we were looking at places to eat, we made sure to look through the menus of each of the restaurants before deciding on which one to go to. Because I, like many other neurodivergent people, have a stomach that absolutely hates me and so I can't eat certain things, it was important to know that I could go to this restaurant so we didn't arrive and then I get turned away. Step seven, make accommodations even when inconvenient. So the next day we went out to breakfast in the city, which was so amazing. We had scootered out there and had this amazing meal and I loved it so much, but then I realized I forgot my earplugs. We were going to be going into Pike Place Market in Seattle, which is extremely busy and extremely loud. And I didn't have a key accommodation for myself, which was my earplugs. So instead of just sucking it up, 
and going and enjoying the experience a lot less and potentially causing myself anxiety or stress or whatever. We decided it was a lot better to get in an Uber, go back the 10 minutes to our place that we were staying, get the earplugs and go all the way back. Yes, it was inconvenient, but did I have an amazing time at the market? Yes, it was so much fun and the earplugs completely changed the experience and I'm gonna remember that forever. Step eight, listen to what your brain and body needs. Oftentimes our brain is telling us what we need and sometimes we just ignore it. So finally we were headed to Panic at the Disco and I knew this was gonna be overstimulating, right? Obviously it's a massive concert with tons of noise. We were on four seats. It was gonna be crazy. So firstly, Moses visited my coochie and parted my vagina like the Red Sea because I got a brutal period out of nowhere. So I was so bloated and I felt awful, right? And all of the pants that I had brought with me hit me right at the like uncomfortable spot where I was bloating. And I was just feeling so overstimulated because of that sensation. We ended up making a very clear accommodation, which was going out of our way to Target before the concert so that I could purchase a new dress so that it wasn't touching me anywhere. And that allowed me then to really enjoy the concert. I made sure to also bring my fidget toys, I brought my inhaler for my asthma, and I also brought my earplugs so that I can have them in the entire time. I literally put them in the second we got in the Uber and I took them out when we got back in the Uber afterwards. So there you have it, eight ways to make accommodations for yourself while you are traveling. This trip was actually amazing because of all of these accommodations I made, but I forgot the biggest accommodation to make when traveling. And that is recognizing that all the dopamine I was receiving from the trip leaves the second I get home. And so when I got home, I crashed and burned, baby. I was stuck in such a huge depressive episode afterwards and it's because I didn't set myself up for success by you know, taking the next day off or ensuring that I had less calls to be doing or you know, setting up other things to give me dopamine input and so I just crashed really hard. So my extra tidbit, my ninth step that I would give you is to allow yourself accommodation so that when you return, you can ease back into life and it's not like this really hard cut dopamine drop. Cause that doesn't go fun. That's not a good time. Mm -mm. So thank you for watching my sweet babies. I hope you have a lovely day and um, a little kiss for you. And I love you, bye.